Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, no, I'm not at my normal set at the moment because my camera is set up for live streams. But that's neither here nor there because we have some interesting stuff to talk about. Um, now look, I am not a PlayStation hater. I think this is something that I want to state at the beginning because I feel like a lot of the videos I make on PlayStation are kind of negative. Uh, and that's mostly just because this channel wasn't covering PlayStation 4 uh, during its heyday. We are a Nintendo-focused channel, hence Nintendo Prime. So we don't talk a lot about uh, Sony and Xbox and all that. Uh, but obviously a lot of the news lately when we do talk about Xbox is pretty positive. Game Pass is pretty nice and I enjoy it. MLB The Show, um, day one pretty cool i really like that that's happening um you know I, I also think that a lot of the news around surrounding sony seems to be sort of negative although there was a nice update to you know that you can now put playstation 5 games on a uh on a different um you know storage medium you still can't use the internal storage and it was kind of a nice reminder that hey it's cool that we can do this thing that xbox series x could do from day one but we can't, you know, still expand the internal storage despite there being an M.2 slot just sitting there on the board. So I, I think it's uh, a rather interesting narrative that's developing around Sony. And I, the thing is, I'm not alone in this. A lot of Sony fans are also wondering if it, if, is it time for Jim Ryan to leave? Uh, and one of the big things that comes up, setting aside the games and whatever else, is that they're de-emphasizing Japan. Now, I've heard time and time again that, well, you know, they're doing really well in Japan. The PlayStation 5 is sold out in Japan. Now, I own a PlayStation 5. I own a Switch. I own an Xbox. So I'm not trying to, like, show some console bias here. I'm just pointing at the facts because we have the latest media create sales in. And, yeah, Switch is still at top. Yeah, Monster Hunter is still dominating. We'll show you that. Switch is still dominating. They have the entire top ten again. Um, that's neither here nor there. I, I think that that's um, a narrative we have talked about many times on this channel, and you'll see it again here. But I want to focus on PlayStation 5 because it turns out that no matter what way you slice it, if you want to say, well, PlayStation 5 is selling well there, it's just selling out, this and that, the Wii U, remember Nintendo's failed system? The Wii U launch aligned is spanking the PlayStation 5 in Japan. Remember, Wii U is a failure. PlayStation 5 is getting spanked in Sony's home country. I'm quoting home country because they moved their gaming headquarters to the United States. Let's just look at this because I, I, I'm still kind of shocked. Uh, just uh, just look at this. Okay, so here's so here's the, the numbers. This comes from Famitsu. So you see Monster Hunter rise at the top at 194,327 units. Super Mario 3D World at 21,000. Um, you know, and, and this is going to be selling out soon. This is physical only. So, you know, as many physical units as I have, and then they're done. Uh, Momotaro, Momotaro continues to be the, one of the best selling third party games. 2.1 million there at 12,920 for the week. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Ring Fit Adventure, Minecraft, uh, Nintendo Switch version, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Splatoon 2, Pokemon Sword. All right, whatever. Like, one thing that's also clear about this, and I, I have another video coming out, is the talk about the future of physical versus digital when we're Nintendo got it right, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, moving on down the list, you'll see the hardware sales. So Nintendo Switch had its natural drop off, you know, because there hasn't a major release right now. Uh, we're, we're in week three of uh, Monster Hunter Rise being on the uh, on the charts. So, you know, we're waiting on the next major game, which is new Pokemon Snap, by the way. For people who don't know, that comes out here this month. So, all right, so you see a natural drop off to 96,259. All right, whatever, right? But here's the thing. PlayStation 5 was at 20,755 last week. It's at 15,560 uh, this week. Three weeks ago, it was at 56,000. So it had like this boost in sales at the same time Monster Hunter Rise came out, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, but obviously, it's dropped off a cliff since that week. Now, if PlayStation 5 is factually selling out, which my contacts in Japan are telling me they can't find it at retailers, so maybe it is factually selling out. Um, I, you know, I, I can't prove that it is, but if it is selling out, just like it is here in the United States and everywhere else, that means that something interesting is happening here. This means that with these low of sales, because I guarantee you sales in the United States are much higher than this week over week, that 
Sony's just not giving PlayStation 5s to Japan. Now, we know they've already reduced the, the Sony Japan studio, um, you know, their, their game development studio. They're, they're, they claim they haven't closed it, that they've just restructured it, but I don't think we're going to see much coming out of that studio moving forward. Um, they just don't seem to care about smaller games, uh, which sucks because Sony Japan made some of the best. I, in my, I mean, this is my humble opinion. Some of the best Sony games came from Sony Japan. I realize that they have their big blockbusters, their God of Wars, their their Horizon Zero Dawns, and all they have their big blockbusters. But I'm just saying, from like just a creative perspective, um, and I'm not saying those games aren't creative, but they're the expected. Sony Japan always gave us the unexpected, uh, just like Media Molecule did with Dreams. So it's kind of sad to see. Maybe they're done with that. I know some people are gonna bring up Bug Snacks or something like that, but um, not really on the same level. I think I think. Anyone who looks at that objectively can see that. So, now I mentioned that the Wii U is spanking it, launch aligned. I wasn't aware of this because I don't. This is reset era. I, I don't really spend a lot of time on reset era. Uh, but I was scrolling down, and I saw this chart. Uh, this is just comparing Monster Hunter uh, sales. So Monster Hunter Rise. Here's this orange one. So it's ahead of World, uh, which is the best selling Monster Hunter of all time. But World is not necessarily the best selling Monster Hunter of all time in Japan. Uh, so it's got a ways to go if it wants to catch up to some of the best-selling Monster Hunters, which were on prior Nintendo platforms. Uh, like 3DS. 3DS sold like 25 million in Japan. Where is Switch at, by the way, in Japan? Where, where's Fimitsu have it at? Switch is at 20 million. So um, 3DS is at 24 or 5. Yeah, so I, I, I think within a year or two, Switch will probably end up passing 3DS and be like one of the best-selling platforms of all time in Japan, if not the best. I'll have to actually look that up. Uh, but scrolling down, there's this chart. And I went back and looked at the Wii U Famitsu um, numbers, and it turns out this chart is 100% accurate. Let's just let's just make this as full screen as we can here. Um, Wii U launch aligned. It launched with more units. It spiked in weeks two and three. Uh, no, actually, I guess this is weeks three and four with even more units. Like it, it sold even better, and then it just kind of kept a steady increase in Japan. Uh, this is not what we saw, by the way, in the entire world. We did see the first two, three weeks, it really spiked over the world, but then Wii U just kind of flatlined. It just kind of flatlined. It barely went up over in the rest of the world. But in Japan, Wii U was actually doing all right. Um, and here's PlayStation 5. So you see launch. It launched at way lower numbers. It had a way smaller bump uh, by week three. And then it's just been kind of slowly going. Now it picked up a little momentum here. Um, around week 12 where the, the momentum started going up a bit more. And obviously there's that week 19 spike I was talking about uh, three weeks ago where it sold 56,000 units. But it's still not really even close. I mean, if you look at this, here's the Wii U chart. Spikes up, consistent slant up. And look at this. Spikes up and then kind of goes like this. Look at the curve. Look at the curve. The curve is a down curve before it finally levels out. Um you know, levels out at a pace that it was, I guess, at launch. Like, I'm sure if you draw a line here, you know, this is kind of close to a straight line versus the dip. So the point here, the larger point, is that obviously Wii U is spanking the hell out of PlayStation 5 in Japan. To those in the know, this might not be surprising. This isn't me. I'm not trying to put out there that Wii U is outselling PlayStation 5 launch aligned, like worldwide. That's not even remotely close. Uh, Wii U was a, a failure. It only sold 13 million units. PlayStation 5 will likely outsell 13 million units in its first full year on the market. So I'm not trying to argue that Wii U is a more successful platform, but I am trying to just show further evidence and further proof that Sony has literally abandoned Japan. Now, PlayStation 4 sold 9 million units in Japan. Yes, that's not the 20 million of Switch. That's not the 24 million of 3DS. But 9 million is nothing to scoff at. Remember, Wii U sold 13 million worldwide. PlayStation 4 massively outsold Wii U in Japan. Like, not even close. And here we are, where Sony just being like, hey, we're either not giving units of PlayStation 5 to Japan, enough units to sell, 
or the device is too expensive, or Sony's just abandoned Japan. Now, the, the, the fourth process is thinking, well, Japan gamers just favor handheld gaming more, which has always been true, but Sony was able to still be successful with their consoles despite that uh, and have a bunch of top sellers in Japan this last generation despite the 3DS, despite the Switch, despite occasional peaks up there from Wii U with games like Mario Kart 8. 8. Mario, it wasn't deluxe yet. That was for Switch. So... Uh, I, I'm just a little worried at this point um, about Sony in general. There, there's a general narrative being built um, that Jim Ryan needs to turn around. Uh, and I don't know how he's going to turn it around. I, I, I think Sony is so successful at the moment that maybe they're a little full of themselves. I, I it, It's hard to know. Uh, Sony definitely is enjoying being the quote-unquote market leader. I say quote-unquote because... Now that they're done with PlayStation 4, technically the best-selling system in the market's Nintendo. You want to argue market leaders, and I'm not trying to be biased here. This is just a fact-based statement. Sony's fully on the PlayStation 5 train. They're done with PlayStation 4. I know they're still dual-releasing games on both platforms because there's a big audience there, but, you know, Sony's on their next generation. You know, the, the old gen's now the old gen. It's now old news. PlayStation 5 is new news. Well, Switch is still current news. So technically, Switch is the leading platform at the moment. Now, I know there's all those debates over being Gen 8, being Gen 9. Some people think it's a Gen 7 Nintendo system when factually it's a Gen 8 Nintendo system. But overall, gaming generations, I feel like it's Gen 9. It is what it is. We're not here to debate that again. We already did a video on that. But regardless, regardless of what generation you put it in, Switch is still the leading platform for Nintendo today and the best-selling platform in the video game realm today. It has been the best-selling platform worldwide, month over month, for almost two years. And it's still true now. It's still the best-selling platform in the United States. It's still the best-selling platform in Europe. Overall in Europe, there are certain countries that PlayStation 5 is outselling Switch, yes. Uh, but overall in Europe, Switch is still number one. And overall in Japan, obviously, Switch is number one, and it's not even close. It's the territory with the biggest spanking happening. So Switch right now is is the market leader. It's the current hottest product selling the most games in terms of Nintendo-made games, of course. Obviously, I think third-party games overall top sales charts across all platforms, but um, you know, not, not in Japan, clearly, but everywhere else. So I, I, I'm just... I, I, it sucks. I, I can't imagine if you're, like, you're a Sony gamer in Japan and you've been rocking PlayStation, you've been loyal to the brand for PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4, you got the PSP, you bought the Vita, you've been all in, you loved that you got Monster Hunter World, like, finally on a powerful platform that isn't held back by Nintendo's own um, own systems, and all of a sudden, you're like, okay, Nintendo's killing it again with a hybrid handheld um, home console thing, it's cool, I still want to get that, I still want to play Monster Hunter Rise on the go, I still have all this interest in what Nintendo's doing, but man, it was really nice when I got home to plop down and play a PlayStation 4 in my free time. And then here's Sony's like, hey, you know what? We, we killed it with PlayStation 4. We killed it in Japan. We, we sold almost 10 million units in Japan. Here's our next system, and we're not going to provide enough units for demand, and we're not really going to incentivize you to buy it anyways because we're going to stop really focusing on making games that appeal to the Japanese audience. We don't have any future contracts locked in place with people like Capcom to get future Monster Hunter games. We don't really have any plans in general to appeal to you guys that bought our system at $9 million plus clip. You know, what do we care? We sold a hundred and what $114 million or whatever PlayStation 4s. Only $9 million was in Japan. What do we care? Our primary audience isn't in Japan. Yeah, Nintendo's primary audience isn't in Japan either. Think about this. The Nintendo 3DS, one of the best-selling platforms of all time in Japan, sold about 24 million. You know, almost, maybe you want to round up the 25, fine. Say 25 million, right? It sold 75 million worldwide. What does that mean? Two-thirds of Nintendo's audience for 3DS isn't in Japan, which means a majority of Nintendo's audience is international. Same is true for Sony, just at a smaller percentage because there's larger numbers. Now, you look back at the Wii days, a majority of the Wii's audience. That's like Nintendo's closest home console comparable system. Uh, the Wii days, hey, guess what? A majority of Nintendo's audience, it was roughly 85%, were outside of Japan. Oh, but 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 that's, that's the Wii. What about the DS? Okay, yeah, the DS, guess what? It was 85% of the audience was also outside of Japan. So I'm, I'm just pointing out, that yes 
a majority of gamers are in the rest of the world. They're not in Japan. That's just a fact. There's billions of people out there. Japan doesn't have billions of people within its borders. So, yeah, there's factually more sales to be had in places like the United States where people have more disposable income, even possibly in places like China where there's just so many people, right? But, but, Sony, for now at least, is still a Japan company. To see them de-emphasize their home country when Nintendo's proving you could still sell tens, 20 plus million units in Japan if you focus that audience. While Nintendo is still getting massive support outside of it. As I said, number one in the MPD for a record amount of like 23, 24 straight months. I don't, they're, they're at an all-time record right now. They survived the PlayStation 5 launch. Right? PlayStation 5 had the supposed record launch or whatever. Yeah. Guess what happened during the month of that record PlayStation 5 launch? Switch was the best-selling platform. Not PlayStation 5. Supply constraints. They had the amount of units they planned to have it launch the entire time. Supply constraint had nothing to do with why Switch was number one. Sony only planned to have that many units available. Now you could argue if Sony had 10 million units available at launch, they would have sold 10 million. Maybe. Or there would have just been overmarket saturation. We don't know. What we do know is Switch factually was the best-selling system in the MPD that month. What we do know is that Wii U, look at it again, spanking the hell out of PlayStation 5 in Japan. Now, obviously, I think PlayStation 5 will probably outsell Wii U long haul. Wii U had a shortened lifespan, all that jazz. Obviously, the Wii U sales uh, do flatline at some point in Japan. I, I believe it happens about a year in the Wii U sales flatline. But I'm just pointing out that I, I'm incredibly frustrated by Sony. I'm incredibly frustrated by their de-emphasis of Japan. Some of those Japan games also came out in the U.S., so like we get less diversity as gamers. Um, again, I own all platforms, so for me, I have plenty of diversity in gaming between PC, Nintendo, Xbox, um, you know, PlayStation, whatever. Like I, I have all the diversity I could ever want as a gamer, but I know I'm in a privileged place. How many of you guys own a Switch? Well, probably a lot because we're a Nintendo audience. But how many of you guys own a Switch and a PlayStation 5? How many of you guys own a Switch, a PlayStation 5, and a gaming PC? Multiple gaming PCs, by the way. Because I got my desktop that I use for video editing, but is a gaming PC. Because video editing and gaming kind of go hand in hand with the hardware you need. And I have a laptop I use for school that can also game. It's got a 2060 in it. It can game. All right, well... Now throw on top, I have an Xbox Series X. So how many of you guys honestly are rocking everything right now? I'm sure. We'll get a couple of comments saying, oh, me, me, me. That's great. I'm glad that you have the disposable income to it. What I'm finding out being an all-platform holder is, while I could afford to buy all the systems, I can't necessarily afford to support them all. Game Pass has made Xbox pretty easy. You prepay for a year of Game Pass, call it good. So Game Pass has made it pretty easy for Xbox, for to at least play some games on it, right? You're not going to get every third-party game and all that on there. Um, PlayStation 5, 70 bucks a pop. It's expensive. I know PlayStation Plus has been giving me some old PlayStation 4 games to enjoy, but, you know, beyond that, you know, I bought Miles Morales, the $70 version, so I could have have the prior Spider-Man game as well because I didn't play that game. You know, I bought the, what is it, Demon Souls or Dark Souls, whatever they, they I, I forget because I haven't actually do dove into it yet. Um, but I bought that for 70 bucks. Like, it's 70 bucks a pop. I mean, Switch games aren't cheap either, you know? $60 a pop, that's, you know, standard gaming prices. And obviously, I'm a Nintendo channel, so I'm more apt to buy Nintendo games versus others. Like, I'm really hyped for New Pokemon Snap this month. I'll be buying that. I'm really hyped for, um, you know, obviously, uh, Mario Golf Super Rush. I'll be buying that. And yeah, I'm hyped for, you know, um, Ratchet and Clank. I might end up picking up that for PlayStation 5, but it, it's incredibly expensive. Notice I haven't even talked about PC. There's games on PC even from prior years I want to buy. Crusader Kings 3. I haven't bought that yet. I really want to get it. Age of Empires 4 coming out. I really want that. It's expensive. And that's something I didn't really plan for when I bought all these systems is how expensive it is to actually game on everything, let alone obviously having the time to do it. That's another thing. As a parent of 3, you know, I... Time is of, of the essence, and as a Nintendo channel, Switch will get the focus, but I do play other things. 
And I, I plan to play PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X uh, more often, especially over on Twitch, you know, where I can diversify the audience maybe a bit more um, and not focus as much on just Nintendo games. Um, because obviously uh, my Twitch audience, it's not like some big audience that, that, that I, I'm too worried about. We've got like 4,000 followers over there. But um, anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rogens from Nintendo Prime. If you made it this far in the video, I don't know, and you're not subscribed, what's wrong with you? We have a giveaway going on for $100 cash money down in the description or the pinned comment. Um, otherwise, folks, uh, I'll catch you in the next video.